10 Reasons Why America Is So Much Richer Than Other Rich Nations The US economy is far bigger than that of any other rich, advanced nation. Based on purchasing power, it's four times as big as Japan's, five times Germany's, and seven times Britain's. Of course, the US also has a much bigger population. Yet the power of the American growth machine is also evident when looking at real GDP per person. As economist Martin Feldstein notes in a new analysis, the sustained higher rate of real GDP growth in the United States over a longer period of time has resulted in a substantially higher level of real GDP per capita in the United States than in other major industrial countries. In 2015, real GDP per capita was $56,000 in the United States. On a purchasing power basis, the real GDP per capita in that same year was only $47,000 in Germany, $41,000 in France and the United Kingdom, and just $36,000 in Italy. So the official measures of real GDP clearly point to the cumulative result of higher sustained real growth rates in the United States than in the major industrial countries of Europe and Asia. So what has America done right in the past, and what are the deep strengths that must continue to be nurtured and improved upon, or at least not harmed, by public policy? Again, Feldstein. 1. An entrepreneurial culture. Individuals in the United States demonstrate a desire to start businesses and grow them and a willingness to take risks. There is no penalty in the US culture for failure and for starting again. Even students who have gone to college or to a business school show this entrepreneurial desire. The successes in Silicon Valley and with such firms as Facebook inspire entrepreneurial activities. 2. A financial system that supports entrepreneurial activities. The United States has a more developed system of equity finance than the countries of Europe and a decentralized banking system that helps local entrepreneurs. The equity finance system includes angel investors willing to finance startup firms and a very active venture capital market that helps finance the growth of firms. The national system of small local banks that provide loans to new businesses includes more than 7,000 individual small banks that are important in their local communities. 3. World-class research universities. These produce much of the basic research that drives the high-tech entrepreneurial activities. Faculty members and doctoral graduates often spend time in new businesses that are located near these universities. The culture of the universities and of the businesses welcomes these overlapping activities between academia and the private sector. The great research universities attract talented students from around the world, many of whom end up remaining in the United States. Four labor markets that generally link workers and jobs unimpeded by large trade unions, state-owned enterprises, or excessively restrictive labor regulations. In the private sector, less than 7% of the labor force is unionized. There are virtually no state-owned enterprises. While labor laws and regulations affect working conditions and hiring rules, they are much less onerous than in Europe. State-level licensing rules are the probably the most serious barrier to job changing and to interstate mobility. 5. A growing population, reflecting both natural growth and immigration. The growing population means a younger and therefore more flexible and trainable workforce. A high degree of geographic mobility within the United States increases the effectiveness of the labor force. The higher level of real income makes the United States an attractive destination for ambitious and talented young people around the world. Although there are restrictions on immigration to the United States, there are also special rules that provide access to the U.S. economy and a path for citizenship green cards based on individual talent and industrial sponsorship. A separate special green card lottery provides a way for eager people to come to the United States. 6. A culture and a tax transfer system that encourages hard work and long hours. The average employee in the United States works 1,800 hours per year, substantially longer than the 1,500 hours worked in France and the 1,400 hours worked in Germany. Of course workers in some Asian countries work much longer hours, with working hours over 2,200 per year in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Korea. 7. A supply of energy that makes North America energy independent. The private ownership of land and mineral rights has facilitated a rapid development of fracking to expand the supply of oil and gas. 8. A favorable regulatory environment. Although the system of government regulations needs improvement, it is less burdensome on businesses than the regulations imposed by European countries and the European Union. 9. A smaller size of government than in other industrial countries. 
According to the OECD, outlays of the US government at the federal, state and local levels totaled 38% of GDP while the corresponding figure was 44% in Germany, 51% in Italy and 57% in France. The higher level of government spending in other countries implies that not only is a higher share of income taken in taxes but also that there are higher transfer payments that reduce incentives to work, so Americans have a higher pre-tax reward to working and can keep a larger share of their earnings. 10. The US has a decentralized political system in which states compete. The competition among states encourages entrepreneurship and work effort and the legal systems protect the rights of property owners and entrepreneurs. The United States political system assigns many legal rules and taxing power to the 50 individual states. The states then compete for businesses and for individual residents by the legal rules and tax regimes. Some states have no income taxes and have labor laws that limit unionization. States provide high-quality universities with low tuition for in-state students. They compete also in their legal liability rules. The legal systems attract both new entrepreneurs and large corporations. The United States is perhaps unique among high-income nations in the degree of decentralization. It's interesting to note how big a role Feldstein sees culture playing in U.S. growth. Agreed, it's a factor that frequently comes up when, for instance, comparing the ability of the U.S. versus Europe to generate high-impact technology startups. In addition, put Feldstein in the camp of those who think government statistics understate the true pace of economic growth, in practice the government agencies underestimate the value of product improvements and do not even try to take into account the value to consumers that occurs when new products are created. He think real GDP per capita might have easily risen, at 2% a year, basically what it has done the past 150 years, the past two decades versus the 1.4% official estimate. I would urge policymakers to look at each of those 10 factors, some of which may be losing potency when thinking about how to increase the economy's gross potential. Free market gross domestic product GDP productivity growth regulation US economy. Discussion 8 comments. Tom says, I'd also add time to that list. The US is the oldest country in the world when measured by a continuous form of government and by definition the oldest free market democracy in the world by far. That's a lot of extra time to build up wealth versus other nations. Richard says, I think you'll find the UK got there on that first. US followed and enhanced UK systems. The US simply butts out of people's lives more. The UK has policies that are not far away, this is why there are more entrepreneurs and higher value young business in the UK than mainland Europe. The UK entrepreneurially shares little with mainland Europe but shares much with the US. Getting fully out of EU socialist policy will mean a much closer tie with the rest of the free Anglosphere the 21st century. If you look at southern England, wealth is the same as the US as is productivity, consequently it is also the wealthiest part of Europe, and West Central London is five times the European average with Luxembourg second with 2.5 times the European average. US is one side, mainland Europe is the other, but the UK sits between. Tom says, for some reason I thought the UK wasn't formed under the current form of government until 1922, but I just looked it up and that was just when Ireland split, but the UK was still the same form of gov. Side note that wealth and GDP are related but not the same, so country like England could have a similar GDP as another country but a lot more wealth due to how long they've been around. Mike says, is cultural change possible? I think yes, in both directions. The previous administration openly sought a change towards continental European culture, which incidentally favors the elite. But Israel and New Zealand, and to a lesser extent Sweden, have changed in the other direction, seeking to become more entrepreneurial and market-oriented. How to manage this? It often takes a very skilled politician to make it happen. Or a general disgust with the status quo and a willingness to try something new. Yet the end result is unpredictable, luck probably plays an important role. Let's hope we remain lucky. Will says, I have always felt that Americans work harder and more hours than most countries and, more importantly, be more productive. In my work life, six days were a minimum for over 40 years. Affirmative action and other nefarious policies have done much to erode the work ethic where this crime is imposed. The policy to de-industrialize America has had the most devastating effect across most of America. With taxes at the current level and rising, I am not that positive for the future. This is a life first time feeling for me.
the government has abandoned the people to favor illegals and foreign nationals. A disgrace and national suicide is underway from the Democrats and they are fighting the Repub's tooth and nail to continue that path of destruction. Richard says, it would be instructive to make this same sort of comparison to countries besides the European ones. Why, for example, is Kenya so different than USA? I think the ability to own property might be at the top of the list. Nestor M. Ruiz, PhD says, all of this factors has been already included in the theory of economic growth as factor that contributes to total factor productivity. This professor that growth theory has been correct. Glenn says, how about this country was founded on biblical principles and was blessed for having done that. Is this just a coincidence that the US has leapfrogged other countries who have very capable resources? I, however, fear though this country is beginning to fall, and will continue to fall in the future if we keep on removing Christ from all aspects of our life. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video please like share and comment. See you next week.